Good morning, you're watching Morning at NTV. Today is a special day. So years ago, I got to meet this special lady, and at the time, the first time I got to meet her, she was interviewing me for a job. I was lucky enough to get the job. I don't know if it's because she likes Uganda, because it's home, and it's very close to her heart, but also she gave me my first big breaks. I know you're going to complain as Ugandans say, but we gave you a big break a long time ago. Well, this one gave me the continental break. Please welcome a Pan-African broadcaster, your TV, radio, you, you write as well. Yes, I write. Yes. <laughs> Leslie Nabunya Kasumba, I said it. You had to say Nabunya, please. <laughs> I had to say Nabunya in there. So for you who is wondering, how do you know Leslie? So what content break are you talking about? She used to be my boss at Channel O. Yeah. And now we're sisters. We're friends. Basically. We're cool with each other. Yeah. We're good. So very few people say, I've worked with someone. They were my boss. And then we're friends. It's kind of hard with us Ugandans. I we. Know. we step on each other's toes, we fight. <laughs> By the time you're like done with a job, you hate each other's guts. But what I've always known about you, you love the continent. Yes. You love Africa. Like I feel like you were Wakanda before Wakanda was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling our stories yeah. before it actually happened. So did the story start from you telling hip hop stories, kind of music stories, or just stories about Africa? I think, wow, that's one of the best questions I've ever actually been <laughs> asked. Um, I think for me, my, the whole idea of storytelling um, started from a very young age, you mm -hmm. know, because obviously we're from Uganda, yeah. and my parents moved from Uganda to Kenya, Zimbabwe, like we literally travelled <laughs> everywhere, mm -hmm. um, and then to South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole time, what I remember in general is that my family was always about telling stories. I think I enjoyed okay. telling stories, so that's where the idea came from. But living in South Africa, um, there were, I, I wasn't able to make friends, which was kind of strange, mm -hmm. you know. And because I was the sort of person who loved to, like, I always wrote in a diary. I, I started listening to hip hop <laughs> because I thought that the way that they wrote was so clever. Okay. And then the first people who actually ma I made friends with in South Africa were the hip hop artists. They mm. were the first person, people who made me feel like I could find another place to call home, okay. so to speak. Um, so it was through that that I got to tell stories. And then as I traveled around the continent, I met many people through mm -hmm. hip-hop, and then they introduced me to other, other people. people. So my entire database and friendship base started from, <laughs> yeah, started from music because it was the easiest way for us to get to know each other as mm -hmm. Africans, you know, because especially then there wasn't a situation where there were people talking from one part of the continent to mm -hmm. the other. But if you had one friend here, you know, in Liberia, for example, they'll say, oh, you know, I know this person in Nigeria. And then you ended up making friends yes, like that. Yes, so yes, yes. I'd, I'd learned to, to understand people's stories through music because I think music is very mm -hmm. it's like really powerful and just listening to of a course. sound can tell you about a country and then from there I started to enjoy the food clearly <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. yeah so yeah so it was basically mm -hmm. I think for me the art of storytelling also came from the fact that I love the continent and I love people mm -hmm. so that's how it all came together uh, let's just define that because I can say I love Uganda because mm. it's home, I'm used to it, it's comfort for me. So mm. I, I could always point to something I like. It's easy for me. Mm. Traveling the continent, with, if I say I love Nigeria, I'll have one specific thing <laughs> because you know what I mean? Because you're, you're sort of visiting the country. If I say I love South Africa, I'll, I'll be specific. Yes. But when you say you love Africa, what does that mean? Do you love, uh, is it how it, people interact? Is it what the future looks like. What do you love about the continent? So I think it's, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough um, to have traveled around the world extensively and then also around Africa. And now when I travel around Africa, it's like choices that I make. Mm -hmm. And what I love the most about the continent in general is number one, I feel that, you know, obviously we've been the continent that has had some of the biggest struggles that have been recorded mm. and everything. But the typical African has this spirit of resilience and hope okay. and they're friendly and they're warm and it's almost like in every country people will invite you into their home. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden like you know you'll be invited into people's homes, people's moms will call you their <laughs> daughter. I'm like oh I have a mom in Ghana I and Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. And everyone, <laughs> yes, everyone you know. <laughs> so I just that's what I love the most. I love the people. I feel mm -hmm. that Africa's biggest resource are its people mm -hmm. and now I feel as though we sit at such an exciting time. The whole world is looking to Africa, Africa, you know, yeah. Africa is, is being told that we're the future, but it's almost like this golden era mm -hmm. where whether it comes to fashion or music or, or movies or whatever the case may be, you know, mm -hmm. people are looking to Africa in general. So for me, I just love the fact that we are able now, um, I love Africa because of the people, and now I love the fact that around the world, people are looking to Africans being their most genuine and authentic selves, and everybody's trying to be African. Like us. Instead. Versus before, <laughs> Africans were trying to, to be, be like other people. Yes. Um, uh, Leslie has Africa Connected. It's uh, a show. 
you travel for business. Yes. And then you have Africa State of Mind. You yes. profiled, you know, some great Africans yes. who've done great things. Uh, but before that, you were with Chano. And I'm asking this because this is business and extraordinary people. And I've actually said we're, you're profiling Africa's rise. Ah, I yeah. like that. <laughs> so, but I'm thinking music used to be the thing which yes. people would look at. I, it, it joined us. It sort yes. of made the continent, you know, just without borders. You worked very closely with artists on the continent. You saw some of the artists who are big today yes. rise. Yes. And I'm wondering what, what our secret is. I know Ugandans are always comparing themselves to Nigeria and saying, yeah. what, what are they doing that we're no. not doing? But I think it never used to be about business. We never used to look at Africa and say, you know, we're an IT mm. continent yeah. or we're a business continent. It was always music. Yes. Do you think a transition happened or do you think music is still there but we're, s we're now looking at diversity? I think that music is definitely still there and it's going to be there for a very long time because on one hand when I think about music and entertainment and popular culture it's almost a way of branding a continent or mm. branding a country. So when I was in Nigeria recently um, I I went to Port Harcourt, which is a part of Nigeria I've never been to, mm -hmm. and I interviewed one of the film school um, lecturers, and he literally said that everybody keeps on talking about how Nigeria's biggest export is um, oil. You know, he said the biggest export of Nigeria is the culture, and that's been done through music, and that's what makes it exciting. So if mm. you think of um, the way America's biggest export was its culture and mm -hmm. its music, Nigeria is doing it similarly. Yeah. With regards to currently, what I do see happening is that while we have music, we have other sectors that are doing really well. Yes, so yes, yes. from the tech sector, in my travels around the continent, from Ethiopia to Cote d'Ivoire, whatever the, the case may be, mm -hmm. I've found that the tech sector is doing so well so and young well. people are in charge of it. And, you know, everybody talks about, oh, let's go to Silicon Valley to see what the next big thing is. Mm -hmm. In Africa, when it comes to tech, young people are finding solutions for local problems that are exportable globally. So I'm excited about that. I think that we're doing really well. In the sporting, in sports, we're doing pretty well. So I think that now, before, you know, where there was like, okay, there can only be one thing in Africa that's doing yeah. well. Now, across the board, when you look at what's going on in Africa, across the board, there's so mm -hmm. many amazing things that are happening. So it's an exciting time to be African, not just because of our music, but it's because of business. It's because of the way we're trading, um, yes. you know, within the continent. It's because of the exciting things that young people are doing. It's mm -hmm. because of people like you. There's so many amazing things happening in Africa. And we, I think that we're coming of age, so to speak. Yeah. So let's Let's start with Africa Connected. Yes. You've been to Ethiopia, Ghana, <laughs> Nigeria, Mozambique. You haven't come here for I Africa know. Connected. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please. You don't really love us. No, no, no. <laughs> I so let me tell you what happened. So, so I did Africa Connected the second season. The mm. first season was done by Nikiwe, uh, Nikiwe and she's an award-winning journalist. Okay. And she, had, she, was in, she was actually studying at the time, so she couldn't come through. So then okay. I got put in, mm -hmm. basically. So blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so I had big Ding. shoes to fill. Nikiwe mm. actually came to Uganda. Oh, so okay. I wasn't able to, to come. come yeah, back. I was okay. just like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. so I wasn't able to come. So what does Africa Connected actually do? So Africa Connected, we um, talk to, we find uh, out about different things that are happening in Africa and how to do business in Africa and how okay. we're all truly connected. Mm -hmm. So in Ethiopia, for example, we went obviously to the coffee sector, which was really good. The biggest, yeah. Yeah, it was, was really good. And then we also went to, I, I got to go to this academy, Lebawi Academy, where they, they combine um, traditional Ethiopian education with modern education mm -hmm. and then these kids go to the school for free and then they get placed into international schools which I thought was really good mm. um, and just the way that they deal with things with economics you know it's on a very basic level is something that people in okay. Ethiopia can understand Cote d'Ivoire was phenomenal um, mm. you know the country has really done well I w I'd never been to Francophone Africa before yeah but I went there and I literally felt like I don't know how to explain it it's j the people are overly sophisticated <laughs> you know hmm. very sophisticated like croissant and you know <laughs> in the morning i'm like oh we 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 french <laughs> yeah so yeah that was really good so but just traveling yeah. around with you you say how business is done and how we're sort of connected mm. because now um this country can trade with the next yes. without even thinking about it i, I wonder what uh, the good and the bad that you saw mm. in, in terms of how we do business across the mm. continent let's start with the good so the good um, in terms of how we do business around the continent is I think everybody uh, understands that in order for Africa to have its footprint around the world, we mm -hmm. need to move forward as a, u as a unit. You know, oh, okay. we need to move forward as a unit. Our leaders need to be in communication a lot more. That was a general, um, mm -hmm. you know, what people were talking about generally. And then also 
I keep on talking about the tech sector, but I was really impressed um, when I was in Ethiopia, for example, that one of the gentlemen that I interviewed from the tech sector actually knew somebody that I knew from Khartoum, so random. Hmm. And then, you know, she knew somebody that I had met in the tech sector in, in Kumasi in Ghana. So it was just so interesting to see how young people were creating a whole other network. So that's the good. Mm. I think that, you know, when we look at things, because in South Africa, for example, mobile money and everything is not something that you see, you know, mm. and in Pesa, done well in even here in, yeah. mobile money is pretty yeah big. it's yeah. pretty big but in South Africa it wasn't there and globally it's not a phenomena that's actually worked but it's something that is literally African born yes and it's been it's done well so when you look at things like that that was really good I think the bad is that as much as I do believe that we're connected um, specifically when you think of countries um, like South Africa unfortunately the PR that goes on about the rest of the continent back into South Africa is not good mm -hmm. so everybody just assumes that if you're in South Africa or if you're in Nigeria or wherever that's where everything is happening mm. but I feel that every single country has something that it offers uniquely so we are our own worst PR we don't <laughs> communicate you know we don't yes. tell enough good stories about mm -hmm. other parts or if you're outside of the East African region you think West Africa is like this you know so yes, I think yes, that Yes. That's, the, that's the bad. You know, once we can get past the PR um, struggle, mm -hmm. then we'll do a lot better. Okay, I, th I, th I think we also take that beyond. Sometimes people come to Africa and they say, I went to Africa, and they really oh. just went to Joburg. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to Africa, and they're only in Addis Ababa. And I'm like, no, Africa. Africa is yeah, spe be specific. <laughs> and I think I see that online when people say, be specific. Yes. Where in Africa are you going? Stop grouping us together. Yes. Because, uh, like you said, where you, everyone has their unique factor mm -hmm. so that's Africa connected Africa state of mind though is where you profile yes. different individuals yeah so Wh who, who was your first I can't even who was my <laughs> first interview oh gosh because I've done so many interviews yeah. oh Flavia you're catching me highlights in the morning <laughs> highlights yes no um wow I've interviewed so many amazing people I mean I interviewed Professor Wale Shoyinka mm -hmm. from Nigeria the Nobel that must Laureate. have been an interesting conversation that was the best Deep. one of the deepest conversations because yeah. I was obviously very nervous to talk to him um, and I remember he's, he's fairly aged, you know, so we sat down and they said to me, you only have five minutes with Professor Wallace Shink. I was like, Lord, I need to have a long time yes, with him. Yes. You know, so it was just really interesting the way that he speaks about Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Um, I interviewed Vivian Onao from Kenya, mm -hmm. who is doing so well. Um, you know, she's a gender advocate and she's just, the things that she's doing is amazing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she's known, she's met more presidents than she can count. Huh. And she's only 26 which is amazing, you know. Wow. She comes from a background where she would not have had an education. So, mm -hmm. you know, interviewed people like her. Recently, I just interviewed Somi. Ugandan. <laughs> yeah, Ugandan. <laughs> I know, I was really excited to interview yeah. her, just hearing her story and, you know, growing up as an African in America, mm. you know, that was quite interesting and in how her family ensured that her Rundis and her Ugandan culture stayed solid, which was quite mm. good. Um, uh, yeah, quite a few people. Um, I interviewed a gentleman who's in charge of the, um, who's done a lot in terms of comedy. Mm -hmm. So he used to manage Trevor Noah he started the International African Comedy Festival of course he loved Anne you know and he's he knows her pretty well and everything so that was really good so those are the kind of people I've spoken to across the board from um, and then also the president of Sierra Leone football who I actually met in Sierra Leone Whoa. Aisha Johansson who's one of the only I stand to be corrected but she's one of the only two women who own um, football clubs in Africa Whoa. and then she's one of the only the, like three or something women mm -hmm. who are president of the f of football in the world and she's part of the FIFA exec committee ca you know CAF so that was amazing I got to actually go to her house yeah I, I was, was going to ask one or two questions first but let's let's start there with the gender question mm. um, I like that you, you were not really I don't know if you were highlighting the fact that it's a woman <laughs> doing all these great things <laughs> But we have to talk about it anyway. Not yes. just her. There's a lot of women who are doing amazing things on the continent. Yes. Even young girls. Yes. 22-year-olds making big strides, especially in the tech space here in the yes. country and many others. And I wonder where you think, because obviously we're moving, great, st great strides in the conversation of gender, whether it's in pay, whether it's in inclusion generally. Where do you think we are on the continent in terms of talking about women and men? So I think it, it, this definitely changes from, from country to country, you know. Yes. So in Ghana, for example, I was really impressed with the fact that because one of their queens, um, Queen Nana, 
a Santwe, imagine. I even know the <laughs> entire royal <laughs> protocol. Because she's the one who uh, who went to battle for them and won. Women are held as, as seen as seen as being able to be powerful. Okay. In Ethiopia also, I found when I went to Ethiopian Airlines, mm -hmm. I got to do a tour around the airline and I yeah. spoke to, you know, the execs and everything. They said, no, here, women, you know, women in Ethiopia, they play a huge role in terms of the economy. Mm. So that was quite different. And then you'll go to countries like, um, say, South Africa, for example, where you don't, as much as, you know, South Africa, women, uh, you, would see, you would assume that women have a higher role. Every time a woman gets Because they have a, uh, positions. They have positions. Yeah. But every time it is like, she's the first woman to do this. <laughs> she's the first, you know, like I interviewed the first black female pilot in South Africa. Oh, so geez. we still have all of that. Yeah. So it goes from place to place. I think that in general, when you look at um, sort of the markets and the informal sectors and people going to the market mm -hmm. in Africa in general, it's the women who actually control the economies in home when you think about it for mm -hmm. the majority of Africans yeah. so I think from that perspective but how do we make sure that when it comes into corporate and business and and you know government sector and everything that more women are included I think that that is quite a big question I've always asked are we fighting for equality or inclusion <sighs> Flavia these questions are hard <laughs> <laughs> it's very early in the morning yeah, we must very talk early about in this the morning. <laughs> I think I think it's a combination of both, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of both, and and I think also there's some women who perhaps get uncomfortable with equality because mm. because you know we enjoy being women <laughs> and being carried. Us. I mean, some I could, perks. Yes, personally for me, I enjoy yeah, you know so the perks that I get. You don't have to be equal. You wouldn't have to be <laughs> equal. Please don't make me pay for things. But I'm kidding. But I think um, inclusion, maybe being if, to have women included more in the economy, so that it's not just in the informal sector. To have women included in making key decisions. To have women included mm. in the corporate sector more than anything. But I think, especially in certain countries, like I assume in Uganda too, because I'm very much like that. We kind of like being ladies. <laughs> we kind of enjoy. And it. ladies not, mean certain things. It's yeah, okay. we're not trying to wear a Superman coat, you know, <laughs> but we are trying to be appreciated. I think. Yeah, that's good. All right. So um, I want to talk about. Af so I was saying the other question about Africa's state of mind is that when you interview um, people who are successful, I always find that. They, there was a time when it was looked at as, oh, Flavia's gone to channel O, and that's a big stride. Mm. Flavia's on NTV, oh, poor you, yeah. right? The same thing, I think you've interviewed someone from CNN, I was just looking at yes. that, and I was thinking, uh, it probably means a lot more for people in her country to see her on CNN yes. than it would be for them to see her on a TV back home. Yes. And I don't know how we're telling that story of Africans being happy with what's on their continent and saying their aspiration of success mm. is somewhere else yes you know rather than saying no if you work for us and build us it's it's better mm. don't you think that should be the narrative Flavia, your questions are phenomenal seriously <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> i'm like wow it's so early no i do think that you raise a very powerful and important point yeah. i do think that part of the the problem around the african narrative for such a long time has mm. been that in order to make it you've got to make it outside of africa yes and i think that things are changing a lot for me personally I do believe that if people at home can celebrate you, you always have that. People at home will always celebrate you. Once you go global, or if that's your intention, mm -hmm. you know, then that is just an added extra because nothing means more than being celebrated at home and doing well at home and being somebody that when somebody types in Google, they're like, oh, Flavia is doing this in Uganda. She understands the culture. She understands mm. the people. She understands what's going on, you know? I think that that's important. Then you mentioned the lady from CNN that I interviewed, Nima Elbaki. And during the interview, what was quite interesting is that we started talking about, because she did the slave trade story. Yes. We spoke about all of that stuff and the award she had won. A bulk of the interview was her talking about Sudan. She said to me, on New Year's Eve, I went here. You need to come with me. So she was so, for her, it, ma it meant so much more mm -hmm. to be celebrated in Sudan. Oh, yeah. And it meant so much more to be celebrated in Africa. So even for people who are doing well um, internationally, so even with Trevor, because I've, you know, I've known him for quite a while, they enjoy a lot more being celebrated at home, home. because there's yes. something that cannot be taken away from that. And we also, in turn, have to celebrate people from our own countries and from our continent mm -hmm. as a whole and celebrate them more than they'll be celebrated Elsewhere. somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think when I was with Channel, I think you used to always remind me that it's good to be celebrated yes. home. Do people at home know you? Because you don't want to ask, who's Leslie? Because they're like, hmm? who's that? <laughs> and, then <laughs> and then because also with the, the, the where you're assuming people know you, it's a big field. So yes. you're just a drop.
Yes. You know, whereas home, people will easily say, oh, Leslie Kasumba, yes. oh, Flavio Tim Seaman. So it's always good to, at home, be important. So as we wind up, we're saying profiling Africa's rise. How can we profile Africa's rise? Is it here talking about it? Is it each one of us making a difference in our own way? whether I'm good at accounting or mm. business or whatever, how are we going to profile? How are they going to know about Africa's rise? I think that the way that we're going to know about Africa's rise, the world they'll know is that if each and every one of us, no matter what it is that we do, you know, whether it's you sell at a market, whether you're in IT, whether you're on TV, whatever the case, it, it, whatever the case may be, be the very best version of yourself, mm. the very best version of yourself, you know. And once you do that, then you raise an entire continent and everybody who will meet people will be like, oh, if you want somebody to work hard, somebody from Africa, they're going to work hard, they're going to be diligent, they're going to be on time, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to bring out the very best. So I think that profiling for me starts, it, it, it's across the board and it's multi-layered because I don't like to just look at <laughs> people who are quote unquote on the top. Yes. I think that in order for the people on the top to do well, the average person has to be doing well, yes. you know? Yes. So I think that profiling um, Africa and making Africa stand out and Africa rising, what we all need to do is be the best version of ourselves. So if mm -hmm. you're going to do something Give it your whole do heart. Do it well. Because you're doing it for Wakanda. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> do it for Wakanda, indeed. So um, on iTunes, uh, we can get the podcast, Africa State yes, of Mind. Africa, State. Uh, Africa Connected, I'm not quite sure yeah. we can catch us. But still, Africa State of Mind is on iTunes. Just Or just Leslie Kasumba. I'm sure you can, uh. <laughs> you can find it. <laughs> She's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. She's being shy about this. So please uh, tweet her. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Flavia. This yes. was one of the best interviews I've done, honestly. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> That's it for Morning at NTV. Have a good day.